last day I shall rise again, shall be remade like God. My home shall be by God's own side, the dying, rising Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives, that I shall rise again. I know that my Good morning, everyone. My name is Father Christopher Cox. I'm the, the pastor here at St. Anselm. I want to uh, thank you all for coming to, uh, to the funeral for Mike Trevisano. I know he's a good family member and friend to, to so many of us. Uh, the, the funeral procession is just pulling up, so um, I have a couple uh, notes of reminder real quick. The first one is uh, make sure your cell phones are off. <laughs> Uh, for the respect of especially the family, Tammy, his wife, uh, just the, the worst thing to happen in a church that has a good acoustics like this is to have a crazy ringtone go off. So please uh, turn off your cell phones. Um, the second thing is once we get started, what you're going to do is you're going to stand up in your pews and you're going to turn around. So anybody who's not an immediate family member going to invite you to take a seat 
somewhere in the pews here. If you're an immediate family member, you're certainly welcome to join Father Sweeney, who will be the uh, celebrant today out in the main vestibule there. And thank you all for, for joining us in prayer in this time of, of mourning. And certainly um, know that, uh, that my prayers and the prayers of the parish staff here at St. Anselm go with each and every one of you. I invite you to stand and face the back of church. Yes, I step up. I just need to get in here. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The waters of baptism Mick died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. shall cross the barren desert, a 
but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see. I certainly want to welcome all of you today. Um, you know, I think once in a while I realize that when you have a congregation like this, some of you are Catholic and some of you are not. And the non-Catholics are probably scared out of their minds. Like, what do we do? When do we stand? When do we sit? Uh, I tell this story very often. My mother had a cousin who every time there was a family wedding, she would call and say, could I go with you to the wedding? Because she knew my mother knew when to sit and stand. I want you to feel comfortable. I'm going to tell you when to do all those things. So nobody has to worry. And the truth is, most of the Catholics don't really know either. So, so. I invite you to pray. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Mick, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is an appointed time for everything. There is a time for every affair under the heavens. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot the plant. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to be far from embraces. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. 
God has made everything appropriate to its time, but has put the timeless into their hearts so they cannot find out from the beginning to end the work which God has done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person, one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. 
Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Tammy, certainly to you and to your ch the, all of Mike's children, and uh, to Michelle, Michael, Anthony, Colin, um, to the grandchildren, TJ, Miranda, and Grace, to his brother Gary, his sister Mary Lou, and to all of you gathered here, my deepest sympathy. Nobody expected this. I was shocked when I heard it. Um, and I'm sure you all were. Um, even this morning, I had 1100 radio on, and I wasn't particularly listening to what was going on, but I heard, and God bless Triv. And so it's, it's really acknowledging that he had an immediate family that he loved very, very much. And he had another family that listened to him on the radio that loved him too. When I talked uh, with Tammy and Michelle the other day, they told me there wouldn't be a eulogy. Um, that's always something that priests are relieved when they hear there's no eulogy uh, because often the eulogy goes in a direction you don't want it to go in. And what they said was, in a very real sense, the whole city of Cleveland has done the eulogy already. And that's true. You couldn't turn on a TV station or listen to the radio without hearing something about Mick the other day. The whole community, I think, was just shocked, as I was. Um, you might ask, why am I doing the funeral today? And there's been a number of people, some have come up to me and said, I didn't know you were his close friend. I need to tell you that I knew Mick only through the fact that his son Colin was here in school. And because he was here in school, Mick would come to different things. There were always different activities, and he would be here. I don't think he missed a one of them where parents were invited. And like any other parent, I would make small talk with him. So it's not that I know him deeply, and even the fact that I call him Mick, is that's what the family called him, and that's what they asked me to call him. I usually called him Mike or Mr. Trevisano. It's like... You know, sometimes Triv, but to his face, he was either, I would say, Mike or Mr. Trivisano. So it's not like we had this long, long relationship, but I certainly did know him, and I certainly did have great respect for him. And that was one of the things I told Tammy the other day. Every time I interacted with him, you could feel the respect he had for me. He knew that... The, the pastor of the parish was somebody to be respected. 
And I think respect is something that Mike had a lot. He respected a lot of people and just reverenced them. You know, if you ask me why we're here today, I'd say primarily we're here to thank God for Mick's life, for just the person he was. We're th here to thank God for things that we remember about him, especially the love that he had for his family. It showed all over the place. It showed right here, his love for Colin. Um, but it was, you know, you heard it on the radio too. When his wife died, you heard the pain that he had over that whole thing when she was suffering from cancer. You heard that over a long period of time on how much that relationship meant to him. You also know some of the things about him. You know, many of you know how he championed coats for kids. And he gave his time for that. And he made it work. And through his generosity of time, and the prestige he had because he was a radio celebrity, he was able to do a lot of good for a lot of kids. And that meant a lot to him. Even some of the things that he did, you know, many of you know, how he supported the police, how he respected the police, how he knew the police. And he encouraged other people to give them that kind of honor and respect too. For veterans and other military people, he was always championing their cause. So he was doing a lot of things that we're thankful for. Those are good things, good things indeed. We're also here to thank God today for something that we firmly believe, and that is that Jesus promised us eternal life. And that although Mick died the other day, he lives on. The preface that I'll say in the Mass will say, life is changed, not ended. And that's what we firmly believe. As Christians, we believe that life here on earth does come to an end, but life doesn't come to an end. We live on, we live on with the Lord in a different way. So the Lord has promised us eternal life. I know that Mike and I just happen to be around the same age. He'd be a year younger than me. That means he was in St. Clair School when I was in Immaculate Conception School in Willoughby. And when we were in school, what happened with the both Ursula and sisters teach in both schools at the time? And we were taught catechism questions. And I want to explain this mostly for those of you who are not Catholic. Catechism questions were things that we memorized. Whether we understood them or not wasn't the question. We memorized them. The first question was always, who made you? The answer was, God made me. Second question was, why did God make you? The answer was, to know, love him, and serve him in this world, and to be happy with him in the next. We both memorized those same catechism questions. So from the time we were little kids, we both knew the drill. There's a time here on earth and you're invited to make the best of it, and then there will be a time when you go to be with the Lord. And that's what we really celebrate for Mick today, that life here on earth has come to an end. It's hard for us. It's hard especially for the immediate family because of the love that they had for him and the love that he had for them. And so we come, um, with heavy hearts, but we appreciate the fact that the Lord has promised us all eternal life.
and it's that that we celebrate for him. I want to just comment a little bit on the readings. The family fixed, picked the uh, first two readings, and I picked the gospel, or at least encouraged them to pick the gospel. I got my way. Um, first one was from Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes is familiar to a lot of people because I think the birds made it famous years ago when they sang it. But nonetheless, it is uh, a rather good reading. It deals with, it says, there's a time for this and a time for that. There's a time for celebrating. There's a time for mourning. And what the, the sacred author is trying to get across is that everything that goes on is in God's plan. There's nothing beyond God's plan. It's not saying that God causes things. It's not like God causes cancer or God causes heart problems or anything like that. It's not like God causes stuff, but he's saying it's nothing he can't deal with. And his role is to help us to deal with these things when they happen. You know, it's not like in that war War is even mentioned in there. War is not part of really God's plan for the human race. He would like it that we all got along. But he realizes we're not going to. But he's saying, even in that case, I'll get you through this. And so it's a reminder to us that God is always there for us. I was asking Tammy some of the sayings that Mick had, and I'll get, I'm going to get to his more popular one later on, but um, she said, well, you know, he, he would say, into every life a little rain must fall. And I think right now, as a Clevelander, we'd say a lot of rain must fall because it just seems like it rains every day. But there was, a, he really acknowledged that he knew there would be difficulties in life, that there would be pain, and that sometimes he suffered it. And sometimes, I think, certainly when Linda died, that incredible pain that he had there. You know, the family told me how much uh, Mick liked playing poker. And I think there were even poker, there were even cards in the casket yesterday. And um, I don't know if he's going to play now. I don't know, but. Uh, um, there is a sense that, you know, I don't play poker, but I do play pinochle. And I know if you're a good card player and you get bad cards, sometimes you can even do something with those bad cards. If you're a bad card player and you get good cards, sometimes you can't even do anything with that. And then I can only imagine what Mike would say if you were that bad card player and ruined good cards. I can only imagine. I can kind of hear it. You know, I heard some of that on the radio from time to time. Um, but, you know, there's a sense in that that you recognize as a card player, I think, you have to take what you're given. Sometimes what you're given is easy. Sometimes it's very difficult. But you have to take it, and you have to do the best you can with it. And that's something he was able to do. He was able to take what he was dealt and do the best he could with it. The family chose the reading from Romans. And in it, it starts out with, hope does not disappoint. And it focuses on the fact that Christ died for us, not for the perfect, although he died for them too, but he died for everyone the perfect and the imperfect. He died for sinners and for saints. He died for us all. And Triv would be the first one to say to you, well, I'm no saint. And many of you knew him that way because he admitted it. He admitted it over and over. But I think the beauty of the scriptures is to say, 
It's not that we're perfect. It's that we're loved by God that's important. And that God said he is going to save us. He is going to bring us to eternal life. Even Jesus, when he walked around here on earth, you notice he didn't usually hang out with the religious authorities of the day. He hung out with the people who needed to hear what he had to say. You know, it's a good thing that Jesus loves us that much, that he's not discriminating between whether we're perfect or not. He loves us all. The gospel, which I did have my hand in, um, says, first of all, it starts with, there are many rooms in my father's house. And there certainly are. And what I think Jesus is getting at when he says that is, we're first of all, all created by God, but we're all created to be different people. We all have different strengths, weaknesses. We're all just different. Even if I look around, and I always have this view from up here, you all look different. I said this once, and there were twins there, and I, you know, got smacked for that. You know, they reminded me, well, we, you know. You know, but for the most part, we even look different. We act different. We have different talents, different abilities. And what Jesus is saying is, there's a place for all of us in the kingdom. There's a place for everyone. That's what he's trying to get across. Then the gospel goes on to uh, a dialogue between St. Thomas and Jesus. And Jesus is encouraging him to follow. And Thomas is acknowledging, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus responds to him by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to me. Uh, no one comes to me, but comes to the Father. He's really saying something. I think St. Thomas is saying something that's very similar to what Triff said. I won't. I'm not trying to compare a saint with Triff. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm not doing that. Don't quote me as saying that. But when Triv would say, I'm living in a world I really don't understand, that resonates with a lot of us. Because the world has changed. The world he grew up in and the world that I grew up in are far different than the world we're living in now. There are a lot of things that are just horrible today. Things that you know, we don't agree with. You know, the polarization of people. We're just, they're just so adamant about it. it's got to be this way or that way. Where people are just disrespectful to each other. In a sense, the world has lost some of the values that it had. And I think when Triv would say, you know, he's living in a world he really doesn't understand, he was saying he didn't agree with a lot of the things that were going on today. And I would have to say, I don't agree with a lot of things either. There are a lot of things that we just aren't doing what we need to be doing. And what Jesus was doing in responding to Thomas is saying, he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. He's pointing out that he is the one who understands. He is the one who knows the way. He is the one that points that way for us. As you grieve, especially, I would, whether you're a member of the family or whether you're somebody watching today on live stream, I would encourage you, and you're grieving in your own way, I would invite you to just Embrace the Lord's words that way. He's saying, I do know the way. I do know the way. Turn to me. I will give you the help 
that you need. Because I do know, I do understand, is what the Lord is saying. I do understand the world you live in. It's hard for us at times, but he is saying he will uh, gather us. He will bring us to the right place. Especially I know in the days ahead, there will be those moments. There are sad moments today, certainly. There'll be tears in the days ahead. They're not going to stop for a while. Maybe someday they will. Maybe they never will stop. But I think what we need to be assured is that, first of all, we're grateful. We're grateful for Triv, for what he did. We're grateful for what he did in life. And we thank God for his life. And we also are thankful, as I said in the beginning, for eternal life. And that's what God has promised, that for those who try to follow him, they will have eternal life. And that's what we celebrate today, that we are people who firmly believe that. And we pray that one day all of us will be joined in eternal life. I invite you to stand now for our petitions, our um, universal prayer. In baptism, Michael received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead him over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Michael was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome him into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all those who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our brother Michael. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our brother, Michael, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend, Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we ask you to hear all of our prayers and to grant all that we need through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as the gifts of bread and wine are presented. Fruit to 
Please stand. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Mick, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. I invite you to kneel. If you find it difficult to kneel, then just be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Anselm, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Mick, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you are God as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead, and lead us, us not, not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver, deliver us from evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, for the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Sometimes at this time of the Eucharist, people wonder, should I come up for communion or not? And um, what I would ask you to think about um, is this, that in the Catholic Church, we believe that we, we even call it communion because it's not com only communion with the Lord, but it's communion with one another. And so as Catholics, we generally extend the Eucharist to Catholics who are practicing the faith. So, um, you know, if you want to come up to me for a blessing or something like that, if you're not Catholic, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but the people who are receiving communion should be people who are uh, Catholic and practicing the faith. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, you should enter under my roof, but only say,
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that your servant Mick, for whom we have celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you to spend a moment in quiet prayer uh, praying certainly for Mick, but praying also for yourselves. The Lord might give you the consolation, the peace, and the strength that you need. So we just spend a moment now in quiet prayer.
Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Mick in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon him in this life, especially the blessings of his family. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Mick and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother Mick to the place of his rest. But now 